Well, hello, Bronx Community College Early Childhood Center family. Hello, hello. I am so happy to be with you once again. As always, I hope that you are staying happy, healthy, and safe. Welcome to another exciting episode of Puppet Time with Mr. Andy. Guess what time it is. Yes. It's that time again. It's noise time. Yeah! Today, just like last week, and the week before, 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 and the week before. Wow. This is episode eight. Whoa. Wow. We are going to make some Noise! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Do you have a noise maker? Hmm? Do you? Do you? You should by now. This is episode eight. Woo! If you don't, I'll give you five seconds to run and grab something to make some noise with. Are you ready? You have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Did you get something? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, 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 I like that. That's really cool. Oh, look at that little light on my wall back there. That's kind of neat too. Woo, 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 woo. All right, good job. All right, are you ready to make some noise? Here we go. We are gonna make some noise for all the first responders out there, the amazing people on the front line, the people whose jobs are essential to keep us safe, the doctors, the nurses, the train drivers, the bus drivers, the people working at the pharmacy, the people working in the grocery stores, the police people, the fire people, the farmers, oh, 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 and here's some more, I forgot to mention this last seven weeks, the EMT people, those are the people in the ambulances that are saving people's lives, and oh, the delivery people, <sighs> yes, all right, are you ready to make some noise? Here we go. On the count of three, a one, a two, a three. and my little pan worked pretty well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Calm down, Mr. Andy. Get a little carried away. I get a little carried away there. Okay. Good work. Are you ready to do this really fun episode? I cannot wait for this week. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Here we go. I'm going to snap. And when I do, I'll be right back. Ready. Ready. Here we go. <laughs> I told you I would be right back. Well, here I am. Okay, today's episode is inspired by one of my favorite books to read and teach to students like you. Like you. And every time I open this amazing book, I discover something new that I never saw before. What does it mean to discover? Hmm. Do you know? Hmm. If you do, go ahead and say it. Hmm. 
Right, yes, good job. It means to find something new. It's like a surprise. Like, I didn't know that was there before. Wow, wow, boo. So, here's the book. It's called The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. And, well, first of all, have you ever heard of this book before? I'm sure you have. It's very, very popular. And it's one of my favorites. There it is. And this is the board book edition. It's the board. It's not board, like it doesn't have anything to do. It has plenty to do. It's actually the board, like wood. It's the board edition. Hear it? It's really tough and, and hard. And I love the board edition because the pages are so thick. Do you see that? Look how thick they are. What? They're not like regular pages of a book. And as you see, it's really cool because when the caterpillar in the story starts to eat through all of the little fruits and vegetables, it leaves a hole. Ooh, isn't that so cool? He makes not only holes in the food, but he also makes holes in the pages. Oh, it's such a cool book. And the thick pages make the holes really cool because they're so, I don't know, they're just so thick and great. I love it. It's so cool. Yay. Okay. Once again, Mr. Handy gets so carried away. He gets too excited. Are you ready to hear this amazing book. Sit back, relax, watch, and listen as I read Eric Carl's The Very Hungry Caterpillar to you. Are you ready? Here we go. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. Look at this wonderful caterpillar. It's all green and got a nice big red head and some purple antennae, some green and yellow eyes. I love it. All right, let's check this book out. Ready? Yeah. What? Do you know what's funny? Remember how I said I discover something every time I open this book? Well, I just discovered something. Do you see all these little dots right here? These polka dots that are all different colors? I think I just realized what all of these are and I'll show you in just a minute. So just remember these polka dots. You probably already know. You're probably smarter than I am. You, you are smarter than I am. You already do know. So Eric Carl wrote this for his sister. So it says, for my sister, Krista, The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Oh, look at the face in the moon. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. Oh, look at the sun. It has a face too. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple. Whoop, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. Oh. On Saturday, 
he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. Ooh, 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 ooh. Look at that caterpillar. That night, he had a stomach ache. Oh. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, huge caterpillar! Boom, 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 boom. He built a small house called a cocoon. Now, Eric Carl calls it a cocoon, but in our science lesson, we called it a pupa or a chrysalis. So he built this cocoon or pupa or chrysalis around himself. There it is, doo -doo -doo -doo, just like in the video that we watched. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. And remember, he didn't rest, he was changing. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon and pushed his way out. Let's see what happens. He was a butterfly. Oh. oh, the end. And my friends, remember, I told you about those little polka dots in the beginning. So I realized right when we started to read this earlier that the polka dots are actually from the little holes in the food. Look, there's, there's the holes. So all those little polka dots came from where the caterpillar, where he ate all of those. Those are the little holes. Whoa, discovery. I love it. Well, my friends, you can clap now. That was so awesome. That was so great. You guys are such great listeners. Thank you very, very much. Now, the very hungry caterpillar is special for another reason. It is. It's it's about transformation. What? Now you may be saying, Mr. Andy, what does that big word mean? Transformation? Hmm. Does anybody know that word? Oh, good try. Let me try. It means when something goes through a change in appearance. So if I somehow changed from me into a dinosaur, that would be a pretty major transformation. Does the caterpillar go through a transformation? It does, doesn't it? It, yes, it changes into a butterfly. That's right, that's so amazing. Wait a second, I just remembered. I have this really, really cool video of an actual caterpillar making a pupa and breaking and pushing. Can we all push? Break out. It's breaking out of the pupil, which is actually also called a chrysalis, and then becoming a butterfly. Can we all flap our wings like a butterfly? Ooh. Or we can even make our little butterfly, our little butterfly hand puppet. This video was made by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. It's so cool. I'm gonna give you some very, very basic science. And you probably already know all of this. You have really good teachers. 
The pupa stage, ready, here's a picture, is one of the coolest stages of a butterfly's life. As soon as the caterpillar is done growing, like you guys are growing right now, and when it's done growing and it's reached its full length, and wait, boom, 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 the caterpillar forms themselves into, here it is again, the pupa. It's also known as the chrysalis. From outside the pupa, it looks as if the caterpillar is just resting. Wait, but inside, that's where all the action is taking place. Inside the pupa, the caterpillar is rapidly changing. Caterpillars are short, stubby, and have no wings at all. Within the chrysalis, the old body parts of the caterpillar are undergoing a remarkable transformation. This is called metamorphosis. I know, that's a really big word. Ooh, just know, it's pretty much kind of like the same word that we are learning, transformation. It becomes this beautiful butterfly and all the parts that were once in the caterpillar's body have now changed into that beautiful butterfly. You ready? Look, look at this butterfly. That's a monarch butterfly. Whew. That was some science, but you know, I really wanted to tell you about it because I think it's so cool. So amazing, isn't it? All right, let's watch this video. I think you've waited long enough. Here we go. This is unlike any puppet I have ever made. I I really, I don't even know like what kind of puppet it is. It kind of reminds me of an accordion because look, you can squeeze it together and then when you pull it apart, it goes out. And then when you squeeze it back together, it squishes back together. 
You know what? Instead of me telling you what an accordion is, let's just watch this really cool little accordion video. See if you can discover, there's that word again. See if you can discover how this caterpillar puppet is like an accordion. I'm giving you many hints. Ready, here we go. My name is Annabelle Pop. I'm from Newfoundland originally, and I grew up with accordions, and the last thing in the world I thought I would ever play is an accordion. Couldn't stand them. But somewhere along the line, things changed, and here I am. <laughs> I'm in love with a squeeze box. <laughs> I get told often that I don't play by the written music, which is true. I don't go note for note. As long as I keep the main uh, theme, I do break all the rules, I know that. But I have fun doing it. If we're doing a polka and I want to go yahoo, I go yahoo. <laughs> it's music for my soul. When I hear an accordion, I want to dance, I want to sing, I want to laugh, I want to giggle, I want to do it all. That spells fun. It just means pure, pure joy for me. Whoa, wasn't that fun? She's such a good accordion player. That was so cool. Did you see how the accordion is like our little caterpillar puppet? Yeah, it's like the shape. See? The way all of the little pieces of the caterpillar are folded together and it makes it look like a little spring or like the accordion, it's folded. And if you noticed the part of the accordion that's folded, that's the part that that amazing accordion player, which she was squeezing to make the sound. Cool. So maybe I'll just call this puppet style an accordion puppet. Whoa. Whoa. We are breaking new ground here, my friends. Accordion puppet. So cool. Are you ready to make one? All right, here we go. You need three pieces of paper. One, two, three. And this is just good old printer paper. But any kind of paper that you can color will work. So three pieces of paper. You also need scissors, a glue stick or any paper glue will work. You need a red marker, a yellow marker, a green marker, and a purple marker. Now that's if you wanna make the puppet that I made, like the one in the book. If you wanna make your puppet another color, like the exciting colors of the rainbow, or a plaid puppet, or a, I don't know, a puppet with flowers all over it, you can use what any color you choose. It's up to you, you're the artist. Now, for my puppet, I used red for the head, yellow for the eyes, green, for the eyes and the nose and the body and purple for the antennae because I wanted it to look like the puppet or the caterpillar in the book. So again, you can use whatever color you want. You can also need a pencil or a pen will work just as fine. You need a ruler or anything that you can make a really good straight line with, but I like to use a ruler if you have one. You're gonna need two sticks. Now these sticks are just something I found in my kitchen. They are like skewer sticks that you can put vegetables on and grill them. Or you can use popsicle sticks like I have in this version right here. These are just little popsicle sticks from some popsicles that were in our freezer. Or you can even just use two pencils as well. You can just tape a pencil to your puppet as well. But any stick will work. You're also going to need some tape. Any tape will work. I just have this little bit of scotch tape here. So those are the materials that you need. First thing that we're gonna do to make our puppet is we are gonna use one sheet of paper to color the body of the puppet. So here's the puppet here and the body, you see the body? Now I only colored one side to make this puppet. Do you see how part of it's white and part of it's green? 
but I'm gonna color both sides of this paper green with my marker. Now, if you have green paper or any colored paper that you want, you don't even have to color it. You can just skip this step and go forward to where I start to cut it out. But if you want your puppet to be colorful and you just have white paper, then you're gonna have to color your paper first. And I'm gonna color both sides. Also, one sheet of paper, I told you to have three, one sheet of paper is just to use to put down behind the sheet that you're coloring so I don't get any marker on my table. Otherwise, my wife would be very mad. So, in order to protect your table, just turn your paper this way, horizontally, and then you can color your paper like this over top. Put this paper vertically or on top like that and color. So you can go all the way to the edges. So I'm gonna color both sides. Ready? I'm gonna do it in fast motion. I love fast motion. Here we go. Now that I have one side colored, all green, and you know, I don't make it perfect. I just want to kind of get the, the feeling that it's green, but you can go to town. You can make your super green or super rainbow or super whatever color you want, but I just like to kind of do a little wash. Now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the other side green as well. Here we go, fast motion, fast video, here we are. Okay, now that you have your amazing sheet of paper <laughs> colored in the color that you want for the body, you may be asking, Mr. Andy, how are you gonna make this crazy cool accordion puppet body out of that sheet of paper? Well, I'm gonna show you. And look, look at that. I saved the table, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do the accordion body. You're gonna need your ruler or some type of straight edge. Now, I like to use a ruler because I know when I make the pieces of the accordion body that they're all gonna be the exact same length or and also width because look, I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna sit it down like this at the tip top of my green piece of paper. You see that? So it's just in line. And I, see that? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna draw a line right there. So, as you can see, I'm gonna grab my pencil. I'm gonna draw a big dark line right there so I can see it. See that? You see the line I made? You know, I could even use a black marker might help so you can see it really, really well. You don't need a black marker but you can use a black marker if you have one, or I have a black pen, this should work just as fine, because you might have trouble seeing the, the, the pencil mark. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna put my ruler down at the tip top of the paper, and then I'm gonna go right underneath where the ruler is, and I'm gonna draw a line. Well, that's a little bit better. You should be able to see that. And then I'm gonna take the ruler and I'm gonna put it underneath or just at the top of that, or under that line. See what I'm doing? I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna draw another line. La, 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 And guess what? I'm gonna do it again this way. You're gonna keep going all the way down the page just to make some stripes or some lines. See what I'm doing? And then I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go down again underneath that line now. And I'm gonna draw another line. And then I'm gonna draw another line under there. So I'm gonna keep pushing my ruler down the page. I bet for you guys out there who know what's next, if I'm making lines, what do you think is gonna go on after this? Yes, we are gonna cut out the lines. And that's gonna be some of the pieces of our puppet body. So looky there. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're probably only gonna need eight because from what I remember, it always ends up in groups of two or pairs of two. So now what I'm gonna grab are my scissors and I'm gonna put my scissors right on that line. And guess what? I'm gonna cut out or cut along that line 
until I have one strip of green paper. Look at that. Now, if you have a piece of paper that's already colored, like a piece of construction paper, all you need to do is start where I, where I started with the lines. You don't have to go through the whole coloring thing. You can just draw lines and start to cut. Now, I'm gonna cut the rest of these out on a fast video. I'll be right back. Okay, now that you have all of your strips or lines or pieces of paper cut out into nice big long rectangle lines, you're only going to need eight of them. So I'm going to put one aside. Whoop! And let's just make sure we have eight. Ready? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Woohoo, we have eight. Now, here's how we're gonna make that really cool accordion effect. It's actually really, really easy. So you're gonna need your glue stick or your paper glue. And this is what we're gonna do. Ready? Take two, put all the other pieces aside. Take two of your rectangles and you are going to make an L. Do you see that? There's an L shape right there. And you're going to put a little glue on the bottom corner or this corner of your bottom rectangle. So I'm going to take a little glue and I'm going to put some glue right there. That's all you need. And now you're going to take your you're going to take your other one, your vertical part of your L and you're going to glue it on top of that one. Don't glue it underneath, glue it on top. So now you have this really cool L and now comes the cool part. We're going to fold it into an accordion. So here's what you do. You take the bottom piece. You see, I've got the bottom piece and I'm going to fold it right over top of that top piece, that vertical piece. So see how I just fold it? I'll do it again so you can see. I'm sure you will need some parental or grown-up help. So I just fold it over like that, you see? And I made the L change that direction, didn't I? Now I'm going to take the top one and I'm going to fold it over that one, see? And then I'm going to take this one and I'm gonna fold it over again. So I'm just going back and forth, I'm alternating. And then I'm gonna take the bottom and I'm gonna fold it like that, see? And then this one goes back over like that. And then I'm gonna take the top one and I'm gonna fold it down like that. And then I'm gonna take this one. Yep, you guessed it. I'm gonna fold it over like that. And then I'm gonna take this bottom one. I'm gonna fold it over like that. And then I'm gonna take it again. See how my little L's getting smaller and smaller. And then I'm gonna take that last top piece. See that? I'm gonna fold that over. So now, look, I've got these little pieces here. Check this out. Do you see this little piece right here? That little last little piece? I'm gonna take some glue and I'm gonna put a little glue right there. I'm just gonna fold that over to sort of lock it all in place and you're gonna love this. Ready, hold on, let me just get that in place there. So we went from, we went from this to this. Now check it out. If you pick it up, be really careful. But look, you made that accordion. <laughs> Isn't that great? And now we're gonna do the same thing with the rest of the pieces. We should have six pieces left. So we're gonna actually do this three more times. So I've got one here. I'm gonna make another L here with these two and see how I'm, I'm, I'm putting the glue on the bottom part. And then I'm gonna take the top one that goes up and down and I'm gonna put that on top of that one. So now I have two L's. I should have one more L. 
So I'm gonna do this right here and I'm gonna put some blue right there and then I'm gonna put this one on top like that. So we have three more to do. So you're gonna have four in total. So let's fold. Once again, I'm gonna show you and then I'll do some fast stuff. So here's the L, this one's on top, this one's on the bottom. See how I glued that one just on top there? So you're gonna fold that over and then you're gonna fold that over and then you're gonna fold it over. It gets really easy once you figure it out. You're gonna fold that over. 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 And then you're gonna get there. And then you're gonna fold that over. Oh, and look, you know what? You know what I can do? I'm gonna take a little bit of glue. And I'm gonna lock it down. So. I'm gonna fold that back like that and look what I've got. I've got a cool little accordion. So now I have two accordions, don't I? All right, I'm gonna do these ones in our fast video. Okay, now I have four pieces. One, two, three, four, and I'm gonna connect them together to make a really big caterpillar. A very hungry caterpillar. So see here, I'm gonna connect them together to make a big caterpillar. So here's how I do that. I'm gonna take some glue and I'm gonna put it at one end of one of the pieces. See what I'm doing? I'm putting some glue there, don't be shy. And then I'm gonna take the other end and I'm just gonna glue it together. Woohoo! And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna put some glue right there. La la la. And then I'm gonna make that one together like that. So look, it's getting longer. Oh yeah, and you can see my accordion's getting bigger. <laughs> and then, I'm not gonna give up my day job and become a singer. And then I'm gonna put some glue on that one. This is the last one. And I'm gonna put those two together. Yay, look what I did. I glued them all together. So let that dry for a little bit. You don't wanna start doing your accordion dance right now because if you do, you might rip them apart. But let those dry for like a minute and then you can start playing around. But the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna decide where we wanna put the head. And I'm gonna put the head on this end. You see my head of my caterpillar right there? I'm gonna put the head on this end, but now we have to draw the head, what? So this is where you're gonna need that third piece of paper. That third piece of paper, here it is. Now I drew my caterpillar head to look like the caterpillar in the book. So I'm gonna use that <clears throat> as a little Hmm, as like a model, so I know. Now the one thing that might be difficult is trying to figure out how big to make the caterpillar head. So what you wanna do is you wanna make it a little bit bigger, the circle of the caterpillar head, a little bit bigger than the body, right? So what I do is I just take my caterpillar body and I scrunch it down like the accordion so it's still drying, right? And then, so it's as good, you can keep pressing it together. And then I take my pencil I'm just gonna draw a circle, but just a little bit bigger than my caterpillar body. You know, I'm gonna like, I'm just, it doesn't have to be perfect. As you know, I'm not a perfect circle drawer, but I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger, like that. That's pretty good. What do you think? There's a circle. I don't know if you can see that pretty well. I'll make it darker for you. I'm just making a circle. Now I know how big, and it's actually a little bit bigger than the caterpillar before, but that's okay. You can make a big caterpillar head. Big heads are fun. And then look, it has eyes. So I'm just gonna draw the eyes with my pencil. And then, you know, I see that there's like yellow parts around the green part. So I'm gonna draw another one so I know how I can put the yellow around the green 
And then what else do I need? Oh, I need a nose. Oh, it's starting to look pretty cool. And then I'm just gonna draw some antenna sticking up like that. There we go. The next part is I'm gonna color it. I'm gonna color the eyeballs green and yellow on the outside. I'm gonna make the nose green like the book. I'm gonna make the face red and I'm gonna make the antennae purple. I'll do that in a really fun, fast video so you don't have to listen to me color. Here we go. Now that I have my caterpillar head drawn and colored, guess what time it is? It's cutting time. Yay! So now you're just gonna cut around the outside of the head. Here we go, fast video. <laughs> okay, 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 we are almost finished. We have just a couple more steps. So now you're gonna take your puppet head that you did such a great job coloring and cutting out, and you're gonna glue it to the body of your caterpillar. And you just take some glue, and you want to push down again like we did earlier. Push down, put some glue on one end. Nice, you can cover that around there. And then you're gonna take your head and you're gonna, and this is what I do just so I know that it's like, you know, it sticks up a little bit. I'm gonna put the bottom of the head at the bottom of the square. So it just kind of sticks. See how I just put it a little higher in the back and it's a little higher now. That way, you see, that way when you're doing your puppetry, it won't be too big and you can make it move across the ground. Cool. See that? Now it's on there. And now you just need to do your sticks with tape. So you need, here's your sticks. And I've got some tape here. Now this part is totally up to you. When I made this puppet earlier, I wanted to do it so I could see it. So I put my sticks here on the sides. You see what I did? Do 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 so I can look at it move. It's kind of was for me. But if you want to put them on top, you can put your sticks up here like this. And you can move your caterpillar across the a table with the sticks at the top, or you can put them on the sides. It's totally up to you. Again, I put mine on the sides for this one because I thought it would be fun to make it move from one place to the next. You could probably still do the same thing if you put them at the top. I'm gonna to put my sticks at the top this time. So I'm gonna take a little tape. I'm gonna take my stick like that and put the tape in there. And I'm gonna go right behind the head and I'm gonna put the stick not on the head, but on the back of the head where the green part is because I feel like it's more sturdy. So you see what I'm doing? I just put that right there. And then what you can do is you can take another piece of tape and you can put the tape right there and then go to the back of the tail. And I'm gonna go right into this part and I'm gonna put my stick right on the last one right there. See that? Awesome, I'm gonna fold that tape around and now look. See what I made? I have this really fun puppet. And it can move like that. Cool. Now, in the next little part of this lesson, I'm gonna show you some fun ways to move your puppets. Now, I'm gonna give you some helpful hints on how to move your puppet. Now this is the first puppet that I made and I put the sticks, remember, on the side of the head, like that. So the really cool thing is if you hold your sticks in your fingers like this, between your thumb and your fingers, right there. See, I've got mine between that thumb and finger and the head one here and you see how I can move it? Because caterpillars, when they crawl, they kind of move like the accordion as well. Well, they have a bunch of legs, but I think it's really fun to make it move like it has an accordion movement to it. So it's like in and out. So it's out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. Oh, cool. Now watch, you can move it and make it look 
at something. Like, I'll try to make it look at you. Ready? Let's see if I can do that. Ready? So I'm gonna go out and out and out. And wait a second. Who is that? I'm gonna look up. Who's in there? Who's in there? Is that a student? Is that a puppetry student? Hello. And then, say you wanted to eat something like a lemon. <laughs> Let's see, what you can do is you can crawl over to your lemon. So remember, put your puppet in your fingers like this, between your thumb and your finger, your thumb and your finger. And let's see here. Oh, I'm so hungry. I really, really want to eat that lemon. Yeah. And when I make it talk, I just kind of do this. You can do any way you want. So I just move the head a little bit. So watch. I'm so hungry. I really want that lemon. I'm gonna crawl over there and eat that lemon. Here we go. Hook, hook, hook. Mmm, so good. Sour. Yeah. So that's that puppet that has the side, the side uh, sticks. Now, if you made your puppet with the sticks on top, let me see if I can demonstrate. Here comes the top puppet stick. This is the one I just made. Same sort of accordion. And then look, you can just pick it up. Hi, I'm a very hungry caterpillar. Do you have any food? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm so hungry. Watch, I'll dance for you. Do 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 do. A boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom. Do you have any food for me? I'm really really hungry. Why yes I do. I do have some food. You do? You do? I do. I do. I have an apple. What? It's from. It's from the Misfits. It's a little. Uh, it's a little uh, wonky, but it's an apple. Yeah. Cool. So that's how you can move your puppet. Yay. Send me your videos or your pictures of you moving your puppets and making your puppets talk if you have if you want. Or just send me a picture of your puppet. All right. I'll have those instructions coming up right after this. Good job everybody. I have so much fun making these puppets with you guys and it's so rewarding when you send me pictures or videos of the amazing puppets that you make. Take just a couple minutes just to take a photo. You can take a photo of you making, creating your puppet. That's so exciting for us to see. Or you could take a picture or a video of you holding your puppet. Or you could just maybe even make your puppet go from one thing to another like I showed you earlier you could make your puppet start to eat an orange or an apple or anything you want you can even make it drink this soda water I don't think caterpillars well actually this caterpillar would probably drink some soda water so you you need to go out and you need to make some videos and some pictures and then you need to send them to me you know the drill you're gonna email those photos to me at Andy Gockel. No. <laughs> You're gonna email your photos and videos to me at Andy at AndyGockel.com. That's A N D Y at A N D Y G A U K E L dot C O M. Andy at AndyGockel.com. Um, and believe me, my friends, I have got some really amazing photos and I just think it's amazing what you guys are doing. So please, please share away with me and then I can share with everybody else. Just like you saw in the last episodes, I'll share with everyone else the amazing stuff that you guys have been doing. All right. So my friends, go forth. Please, please stay safe and healthy and happy 
and just smile as much as you can and I am sure that we will be together in a really cool way very soon, my friends. We'll all be hanging out again soon. So for now, just enjoy the time that you have with your families and your loved ones and just appreciate everything around you. All right, my friends, I'll see you soon. Mwah!